Hello everyone, David Malley here. And today what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to make some really cool graphs like this right here. This is a year over year graph. We're going to go through and do all kinds of cool things with the graphs. What I want to basically do is take everyone from the basics into the more advanced and more custom graphs. And there's a reason for that. I've seen a lot of graphs from great data scientists, great data analysts that uh, are kind of benign they kind of they do a great process and then at the end they, when they present it to their users they're like well here and they have graphs that could definitely be improved upon so that's what we're going to do here so basically we're, this is a two video series and we're going to break it up into part one we're going to do a violin plot histogram and bar plots and then in part two we're going to do density plots scatter plots and of course the year over year line graphs and I'm going to show you how to the basics out of the box and I'm going to show you how to make them far better and more improved and better for documentation and your users for reports and stuff like that. So to start off here, let's first start with these libraries. you got four libraries here we're going to use. Tidyverse, ReadXL, ggplot2. If you put in Tidyverse, it's got ggplot2 in it already. You know, So I just you don't really need to have all four that's included in this one. But if you don't have this one, you're going to have to put in ggplot2. You also need Vioplot. Okay, that's for the violin plots we're going to do. If you don't have one of these, just go and put them in with this install.packages here. Now we're going to load in the data set that's this uh, right here. It's called uh, Tool Rentals for 2016 2017. It's two years worth of sales. This is for a construction tool rental business that uh, rents things like some cement mixers and uh, drain augers, commercial drain augers, and things like that. So the data, if we look at it, I'm going to post this on Kaggle so you guys can go download it and look at it and play with it and do the same things I'm doing here. Uh, I'll do that as soon as I'm done with putting these videos up and posting them up on YouTube. So you can see here you got date, uh, season, year, month, workday, uh, weekday, temperature, humidity, wind speed, and the most important things here are the date and then these three right here, the new rentals, repeat rentals, and total rentals. In the examples, I'm going to use the new rentals, but you could use repeat rentals, which is your customers that have already rented before, tools before, and then total rentals. New rentals is obviously people, this is their first time in the, to rent a tool. So let's go back, and in here, once you've loaded the data set, you'll see it in here, and we can go look at it if we want it's the same things what we just saw. So next, once we have that loaded in, what I want to do is I want to um, work on the violin plots. Let's go here and you got two groupings here okay because I want to do it twice. I want to show you it for weekday and it for season. So the first one what we're doing here is we're taking the column once we've read this data in there for new rentals from the data frame test data 3 and what we're going to do is filter it by weekday equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 you know, seven days of the week. One is Sunday, seven is Saturday. We're going to put the in these vectors here, graph zero through six. Then we're going to repeat this for the seasons. The only difference we're doing here between this and this is we've changed the filter to be from weekday to season. And then there's four seasons, one, two, three, and four. So you put that in graph seven through ten. It could be named something else, but I did it for simplicity's sake, graph zero through six and graph seven through ten. So next, what we're going to do, let me open this up for you a little bit here okay there we go and we're gonna do the basic violin plot okay this is it right here it's vial plot function and then your you know graph zero through six in this case because we're doing weekdays first and then the names you can name them one through seven you can name them Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday, Thursday Friday Saturday whatever you want I'm gonna keep it simple here so let's just do this you run it and there it is kinda ugly no titles um, and it's just gray and white and black. Um, you know what a violin plot does? It shows you the breakdown of where the customers lie on those days, the activity on those days, and then it shows you some outer liars, these top pieces right here. And some have a wider range than others. And it shows you know there's more at this point than there is at this point. And uh, that's why this little dot is farther up here than maybe here, where it's more in the middle. Same with here. Anyway, so that's how a violin plot works, but this is kind of boring and dull, and I've seen people put stuff like this in their, their reports to users. You don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that same line of code right here, put a comma at the end of it, and then we're going to put this column, or color, I'm sorry, col is color, equals orange, and then we're going to follow it with the title right here, okay? 
So the, the color is going to be orange now, and the title is Tool Rentals by Day of the Week. So let's run that. Same thing, look at that. Doesn't it look better? Now it's orange. It's got a uh, title to it. Looks a little bit better. Now what if we did this for the season, right? So this is weekday right here, right? You got one through seven. We could also do this for the uh, seasons, which is one through four. And the difference here is I did it with green. Column equals green. Tool rentals by season. And we could do that if we wanted to. There we go. We got seasons one, two, three, and four. This is for data analysis too, by the way. So you get to look at things from different perspectives and identify you know we have uh, the season one two three and four obviously the winter things come down same with the uh, season one but for uh, summer and fall they're up higher and um, they're still climbing here the uh, middle of the road of these uh, customers um, but this top part starts to drop and then it drops more and then you can see the out the break out of how these customers look that's what the importance is of these violin plots so you can see from the basic to the better ones the difference here now let's go to histograms right so histogram we're gonna do it the same thing we're gonna do it based on temperature right so let's do it this way oh that's kinda ugly that looks like something like uh, either a monster or something blew up in the Atari, the world of Atari way back in 1981 or something or 1980 uh, horrible graphics there you got temperature you got count and it just looks nasty. So let's make it a little bit better. And this, by the way, is the Qplot function. You can see it right here with the uh, data frame. And then we use Xlab. Ylab is for the X label and Y label. And the geome is what it is, a histogram. OK, these, it's, this stays the same right? in the next one. But I want to make it better. So I've added these three to it. What that is, the bin width, which means the width of each of these uh, bins or uh, uh, rows, you'll see, or columns, actually, they'll be in this case and uh, so they're going to be smaller and then we're going to change the color to steel blue and we're going to change the outline of each of those steel blue, steel blue uh, containers to black so watch this if I take this whole thing right here and I run that look at that now I can make the bin width different I can make the bin width too and you'll see that they uh, change in the size of the bins but it still looks a whole lot better than it did originally, right? There you go. You could do it that way. I prefer the one. It gives me more lines to it and a little more breakdown. But you could you can see the idea. You could use 1.5. You know, you could use whatever you want in it and um, have it look the way you want. But it looks a whole lot better here. Next, we're going to do bar plots. So in this video, this is the last we're going to do in this video. Then we'll do the rest in the next video. And I want to show you a basic bar plot. I see these a lot. And... Uh, Yes, it looks ugly, and this shows 2016 and 2017 data. I know that because I'm looking at the data that I've just run, but the thing is, is my users have no idea what this means. And people actually send graphs like this to people, and they're like, well, what is this? Can you explain it to me? Can you come by my cube? Can you come by my office? Can you come by, you know, explain it to us in our meeting? You don't want to have to do that. So let's make this better. Let's improve this. So that was using the basic bar plot function. The bar plot function with the... Uh, data frame in the column inside it okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a X and Y labels to it we're gonna add a title to it we're gonna add a coloring to it okay so that's what this all does right here we take the same thing and we use the names argument we use uh, colors red border equals NA because if you don't do that it stays black and uh, main equals tool rentals by date that's your title and then we got Y lab is rentals and X lab is date those are your labels on the sides so let's run that and see what that does okay now it looks a little bit ugly because it's small but if I take this and make it a little bit bigger watch boom it pops okay and this is what you would use here now I could have used months instead of dates dates works best for these graphs so if you have dates so I have dates individual dates so that's what we've used here. It's not obviously going to show every single date, but it shows ranges. So that's what you want to see. So you've got your rentals by date, the actual dates here. So you have an idea of what the dates are. So these are actually your 2016s. These are your 2017s. And two rentals by date. I could have changed the color to something else. And we're going to do that here in a second. So now what if I take this same bar plot that you just saw right here, and I want to add a coloring. But instead of a coloring like this where it's all the same color, 
I want to do it by a, uh, a variable. So let's bring this in. What I've added to this is this call equals test data three dollar sign season. That's your data frame, the column from it season. And uh, by doing that, what it's going to do is going to break it up. Remember, I've got four seasons here. So they're numbered one through four in the data. So it's actually going to go and display these by color, by season. Watch this. So I take that and I run that. Boom, look at that. So now I can actually compare not just year over year, but I can actually go in here and say, okay, here's season you know, one, two, three, four. So season two is red and season two here is red. And I can clearly see that the uh, it has changed from here to here. The highs are higher. The lows are, well, almost about the same. The lows are the vast majority of them, but you have a lot of growth in this area right here, and these are higher. So, and I can look at the rest of them and, and look at that. And th this is all great for data analysis and for showing your data and comparing, you know, different periods and stuff like that over the years and stuff. So, basically, what I did with there, what I did there was I added just this one little thing right here. This. That's the main thing there is test data three seasons instead of, see this, where it was red next to it. That's what I did there. So in the next video, we're going to go into density plots, which are really cool. And we're going to do density plots. We're going to do scatter plots. And then we're, of course, going to do that fabulous year, year over year, which is really cool when you know how to do that. Uh, and I'm going to show you some tricks and stuff along the way, too. So please stay tuned for the next one. Thanks for watching. Please make sure, if you haven't already, subscribe, like, and share this so other people can uh, enjoy this and learn from this just like you have. Thanks again and have a great day.